all right so very good morning to all of you so welcome you on youtube channel of an academy iit jam live this is your educator srishti and in this particular class we'll be discussing question uh, on basically uh, your chemistry section okay which is very important for iit jam 2021 examination so this is part three of questionnaire series we have already discussed two uh, questionnaire series and those classes are available on an academy special platform okay so those classes are free of cost you can watch those classes also practice those questions also so for those classes you'll find the link in the description box so you can watch those class classes from there okay so let's uh, begin with today's session so uh, if you're watching this session live so please tell me if uh, right or voice is audible screen and voices are uh, clear okay so let's begin with our session so let's take first question so this is the first question and what do you have to find out so basically the electron of an hydrogen atom in its 9th orbit having de broglie wavelength is equals to 13.4 angstrom so this is the question what do you have to find out the value of n so you have to find out the value of orbit So what you have to find out the value of n and de Broglie wavelength is given. Okay, so I'm waiting for your answers. Yes, everyone. So what answer you're getting for this question? All right. Okay, so let's try and solve this question. So what is given the electron of a hydrogen atom in its 9th orbit? Okay, so basically in its the electron is present in 9th orbit and what you have to calculate you have to calculate this value of n okay so how we can calculate this value see what is de Broglie wavelength de Broglie wavelength is lambda is equals to h by p okay where h is your Planck's constant and p is your linear momentum okay so what we can write down lambda is equals to h by p is equals to h divided by mass into velocity okay linear momentum is mass into velocity so we know basically uh, this value we know lambda value right this is a constant value we know this value so we can find out the velocity value and from this velocity value we can find out the value of n okay so this is the formula that we have to use so basically velocity is equals to h by m lambda this is your velocity and what is the value of h h is 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule seconds so this is the value of your h okay 
Uh, let's take mass value. So what is the mass value? 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kgs. Okay, this is your mass value. And lambda value given over here is 13.4 angstrom. So we'll be converting this angstrom values to meters. Okay, so 10 to the power minus 10 meters. So this is your expression. Now velocity is, you can calculate this part. Uh, just calculate this values and tell me what value of velocity you are getting. So this is nothing but 10 to the power, okay, uh, it's 10 to the power minus 34 plus 31, that is 5 and minus 10, okay. So basically approximately I think we'll be getting uh, somewhere around uh, this, this value, okay. So let's solve this value. This one is 6.626 divided by 9.1 into 13.4, right, into your 10 to the power minus 34 plus 31 plus 10 okay so this is your value so this will give you all uh, right this this is basically 41 41 minus 34 is your 7 so 10 to the power minus 7 okay so just calculate this value okay so let me calculate this value so this value is coming around uh, 541249 okay this value is coming around 541249 uh, point 7 meter per second okay so all of you are getting this value only just confirm it all of you are getting this value only 541 right 249.7 meter per second okay so this is the velocity value that we are getting from here now we know one expression of velocity which relates your nth value okay so what is velocity velocity is nothing but 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 z into n okay uh, this is your velocity 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 z into n okay now this is your expression we got this value we can equate this value with uh, this expression and we can find out the value of n okay so it's written over here it's hydrogen atom so z is is equals to 1 for hydrogen atom okay so now we have to calculate n value so what is the n value after equating this expression with this value so what value of n you are getting four all right okay so this value is four so basically n is equals to four over here so orbit value is four so this hydrogen electron is present in a uh, four or fourth orbit okay so this is how we can solve this question now let's take second question so this is your second question and what you have to calculate which of the following pairs of operators commute Yes, definitely you should write. We can calculate with this formula also. Okay, uh, definitely we can calculate with this formula also. So you have different ways to solve any particular question. Okay, so whatever is comfortable for you, uh, so you can go with that method.
All right, so most of you are going with the option B. Uh, so let's find out, okay? What we have to find out, which of the following pairs of commutator commute, okay? So basically, A operator and B operator, this, this commutator value should be 0, okay? Then only these operators will commute, okay? So let's go with first option. So this is x and d by dx, okay? So we know x and d by dx value is non-zero, okay? What is this value? Anyone, what is the value of x into dx? So these values should be basically on your tips, okay? This this value is minus 1, right? This value is minus 1, so this is not 0. So definitely this does not commute, okay? Let's go with B option. So this is your d by dx, d square plus 2 d by dx, okay? So d by dx, then we have d square. So d by dx, d square by dx square. So this is your first commutator plus 2, which is your constant value d by dx into d by dx okay so see these two commit uh, these two operators are same operators okay just they have different powers so definitely this value would be equal to zero okay this value is also equal to zero right so this value is zero this value is zero so this value this total commutator will be zero so correct answer over here is option okay let's go with c value so this is your c value so this is your commutator and uh, right how we can find out this value uh, this this first uh, operator into d square by dx square okay into your d by dx so this is how we can solve it plus d by dx x square plus we can multiply this value so this would be uh, d by dx right in plus x square over here right d by dx into d square by dx so this is how we can solve this value so this total will be zero but this will give you some value okay so this total commutator is non-zero so this is your incorrect option this is your incorrect option x square d by dx definitely this is also your incorrect option okay so what would be the value the value would be 2x okay and this is the value would be minus 2x okay so this is how we can solve this particular question okay so i hope this is clear to all of you any doubts this is not minus 2 bharti right this will give you minus 2x okay with 2 minus 2 you will have x also right so now let's go to the next question this is your next question and i hope this question is clear to all of you if in case you have any doubts please feel free to ask in the comment section So the question says an acid base indicator has Ka value. So this is your Ka value 1.0 into 10 to the power minus 5. The acid forms the indicator is red. Basically the acid form of this particular indicator is red and basic form is blue. Okay. So what we have to calculate? Calculate the pH change required to change the color of indicator from 80% red to 80% blue. Okay. So this is your question. Okay, so you can solve this question. Uh, C, C part, okay? So let's see what is basically your C part. Uh, right, okay? Uh, C, this is your x square d by dx. First operator and second operator is d square dx square. Okay, so this is your operator. So what we can write, right? This is nothing but a, b, c, right? This is nothing but a, b operator. Uh, C commutator C okay so this is how we can calculate this value so now how how we are going to open this particular commutator this will be this operator right into this operator minus this operator 
into this operator okay so this is basically how we can open this operator okay or the best way to open this operator is a into c first you're going to multiply a with c right so then this is b okay plus what we can uh, what you can actually write down now so this is b into c right plus a so this this is how you can open this operator now you can solve these two parts okay so this is how we can solve uh, this part is it clear Okay, so you're getting 5, you have to find out pH change. Yes, everyone, what is the answer for this question? Okay, so let's solve this question. So the question says an acid base indicator. So this is your Ka value, right? And what we have to calculate the pH change. Okay, we have to calculate the pH change required to change the color of indicator from 80% red to 80% blue. Okay, <clears throat> this is your question. So let's let's solve this question. So first part is what is the reaction? Okay, we have to write down the indicator reaction. So indicator reaction is HIN. Okay, this is an equilibrium with H plus N, IN negative. So this is your indicator reaction HIN H plus IN negative. Okay. So can I say this this uh, half is basically this will give you red color because this is your acidic condition. Okay. This is basically your acidic condition and it is written acid form of the indicator is red. Okay. So definitely this is your acidic condition condition acidic form of indicator is red. Right. And this is your basic condition. Right, this is your acidic condition and this is your basic condition. Okay, so let's solve. So first part is basically when indicator is 80% blue. Okay, when indicator is 80% blue. So pH is equals to pKa plus log IN negative divided by HIN. Okay, this is how we can use Henderson's equation. 
right uh, your basically ionized part divided by unionized part okay so this is a uh, ka value which will be constant for both the cases so 80% blue means in concentration is basically 80% right and hin is 20% fine in is 80 percent and hin is 20 percent okay so ph is equals to pka plus log okay this this would be 80 percent and this would be 20 percent so this is your first equation let's write ph1 okay second is 80 percent red okay it's written we have to find uh, the difference from 80 percent red to 80 percent blue so second is 80 percent red so ph2 would be pka right plus log concentration of in negative so 80 percent red means in negative would be 20 percent and this would be 80 percent fine so now how how we can write down 20 by 80 right this is going to be your second equation fine this is going to be your uh, second equation so what we have to calculate we have to calculate the change from 80 percent red to 80 percent blue okay so we can calculate pH of your 80% blue minus pH of your 80% red. Is it clear to all of you? This is how we are going to calculate it. So pH of 80% blue is pH 1. Okay. pH of 80% blue is pH 1. One second. Yeah. So pH 1 minus of your pH 2. Right. 80% red. So 80% red is pH 2. Okay, so 80% blue to 80% red. So this would be pKa plus log 80% blue, right? So 80 by 20 minus pKa minus log 20 by 80. Is it clear to all of you? This step is clear, yes or no? Is it clear, right? How we got this step? pKa plus log 80 by 20 minus pKa minus log of 80 by uh, 20 by 80. Okay, so PK and PK would be cancelled. So this would be log 80 by 20. Okay, and this is uh, this is basically minus log. So we can write down plus log 80 by 20. Okay, this is minus log 20 by 80 and this would be log 80 by 20. Okay, we, we have just reversed the equation, right? So minus would be positive now. So this is nothing but what you can do 2 log 80 by 20. Okay, so this is nothing but 2 log 80 by 20. So this is how you can calculate the value. Now just calculate it. What is the pH difference coming? Okay, so you're getting 1.204. Fine, all of you are getting this difference only. pH difference is 1.204. Just calculate this value 1.2 okay so pH change is 1.2 okay pH change is 1.2 so this is how we can solve this question any doubts in this question I hope this is clear to all of you so this is how we can solve it so there is no need to uh, just calculate these steps okay you can calculate in end so basically you can write this equation then you can calculate it okay great so now let's take next question
Okay, so the question is which of the following is correct graph between surface film pressure that is your pi and surface area A, right? So this graph you have to find out uh, between surface film pressure and surface area. All right, guys, uh, so let's solve this question. So how we can approach this question? C. So what is the equation of surface film and surface pressure? Pi is equals to surface axis RT. Right? We know this equation from adsorption isotherm. Pi is equals to surface axis into RT. Okay. So what we can do basically, this is our first equation. Okay. This is our first equation. And what is pi? Pi is basically surface film pressure. Okay. So surface film pressure is number of moles, right? Divided by your area. That is how we can calculate it. Number of moles divided by your area. And what is number of moles? Number of moles is number of molecules into uh, number of molecules into your Na. That is Avogadro's number. Okay. So now if I want to write down number of molecules over here, so that would be number of moles into Na. Okay, this is how we can find we can find out number of molecules. Okay, so basically your surface film pressure is n by n a into area. Okay, this is your surface film pressure. Now I'm going to substitute this value over here. Okay, where n represents your number of molecules adsorbed. Okay, number of molecules adsorbed, and this a represents your surface area, and n a over represents your Avogadro's number okay so this is how we can uh, find this relation next thing is uh, pi is equals to surface axis into rt we can solve this question even without der uh, right deriving this part but let's see okay so this is your equation so next equation would be so i'm going to substitute all values over here so this would be now pi is equals to na by right this is your area into basically rt Okay, this is how we can write this equation. Now we know R by Na is nothing but Boltzmann constant. Okay, so pi is equals to n kBT. So this is one equation. Pi is equals to n kBT. Okay, so this is how we can find out this equation. Pi is equals to n kBT. Right. So now let's uh, let's equate this equation uh, with your uh, uh, ideal gas equation. Okay, what is your three dimensional equation? Three dimensional equation is PV is equals to nRT. Right, three dimensional equation is uh, PV is equals to nRT. Now, if your temperature is constant, okay, if your temperature is constant, so what we can say that pressure into volume is also constant, okay. Pressure is volume, this the, the, the multiplication of the product of pressure into volume is basically constant, okay. So, now if I equate this equation with your two dimensional analog equation of this value, so that would be pi is equals to n kBT. See, pi is equals to. Uh, n, n kbt okay so this is your equation over here or what we can write down basically pi a is equals to n kbt okay pi a is equals to n kbt so this is your area pi a is equals to n kbt so now if temperature is constant so we can say pi a is also constant okay pi a is also constant that means the product of pi a is also a uh, constant okay yes definitely uh, there is uh, this value let's write down area over here right now it's fine akshita so this is pi a is equals to n kbt so pi a is basically constant okay so pressure into volume is constant and pi into a is constant okay so now we can just uh, plot this graph so now the correct graph would be pressure and volume are uh, related in this way so pi and a would be in this way okay pi and a would be in this way is it clear to all of you any doubts so option d is basically your correct answer okay is it clear? I hope this is clear to all of you. So pressure and volume is related in this way. So pi and a would be related in this way. Okay. This is nothing but two dimensional equation. So let's go to next question.
yes it's discrete okay it's discrete you have to find among the following the carbon allotrope with discrete all right molecular structure Right, okay. So the correct answer over here is option C, fullerene. Okay. Among the following, the carbon allotrope with direct, uh, with discrete molecular structure. Okay. Discrete means there is basically some difference. The system is not continuous. Okay. Just like we have discrete energy levels like this. Okay. So similarly, the system is basically not continuous. Okay. So we know in diamond, in graphite. Okay. In alpha graph graphite and beta graphite, the, the system is basically continuous. Okay. So fullerene is the correct answer because it's nothing but it it has your pentagonal rings also and hexagonal rings also, right? And the system is not uh the system is not continuous. Okay. The system is di discrete. So the correct answer over here is option C fullerene. All right, then this is your next question. Assuming that all structures are planar, which structure would be aromatic? right okay good work all of you the question is very simple we have to find which structure would be aromatic so one two three four okay eight pi electrons so this is your a uh, non-aromatic system okay this is your anti-aromatic but now the system would be a uh, non-aromatic okay so this is one two three four five six okay then again 12 electrons so it won't follow 4 and plus 2 system so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay 16 electron similarly 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so 18 electron definitely this will follow your Huckel's rule okay so 4n is equals to 16 and n is equals to 4 okay so this is the correct answer that is option d great so let's take next question now the number of sulfur sulfur bonds in H2S5O6.
good work okay so now the questions are very easy so in the next section i'll be taking uh, some difficult questions right just like we discussed in our special class so this is the question the number of sulfur sulfur bonds in h2s5o6 okay so definitely it's a thionic acid series so we have sulfur double bonded with oxygen double bonded with your oxygen okay sulfur double bond o double bond o this is your oh this is your OH, right so two sulfurs are used so we have basically five sulfurs so s3 okay this would be your series okay uh, this would be your series now now number of uh, ss bonds would be sulfur sulfur right we have five sulfurs so how many sulfur sulfur bond one two three and four okay so we got four sulfur sulfur bonds over here good work okay so now let's take next question right okay so this is me3 sicl and this is your me2 sicl2 okay so after hydrolysis this would be me3 sioh and this would be me2 sioh whole twice okay so we have two ox uh, we have two hydroxyl units with this silicon and we have one hydroxyl unit uh, with this silicon okay so how it will form silicon so this one hydroxyl this one will just a uh, link with this two hydroxyl okay so this is going to be your chain terminating silicon okay this is going to be a chain terminating silicon so it would be now silicon right uh, then we have two methyls oh and oh okay so this oh would be bonded to your silicon and silicon then we have three methyls okay so it would be a two dimension it would be a one dimensional chain like this not two dimensional one dimensional chain like this okay so this is oxygen and oxygen of this silicon unit and this oxygen is basically of the silicon unit okay with loss of your water molecule so i hope this is clear to all of you let's take next question Uh, when B is positive, okay, in what scenario B is going to be your answer, okay? See, in this case, it's a two-dimensional structure, okay? So, this is basically 1 and 2, okay? This is basically 1 and 2, and with the silicon, this is 1, 2, and 3, okay? So, we should have Me2SiCl2 plus Me, right, SiCl3. 
so when we have this combination okay aruna then uh, this type of silicon would be possible okay see, see this is how you can see the structure the silicon is linked with three oxygens and it's a continuous series and this silicon is also linked with a uh, three oxygens okay so in these cases we can have uh, this type of structure okay i hope it's clear when we'll be taking two molecules of your me sicl3 okay this silicon has only one methyl ring the silicon has, has only one methyl okay over here also you can see only one methyl one methyl okay so we need two molecules of me i am i me basically methyl silicon chloride is it clear so we, we need two molecules for this one okay let's go to uh, this question now Okay, so some of you are going with B uh, or, and some of you are going with basically D. All right, okay. So let's solve this question. So basically the question is the first excited state. So, if you have first excited state, so N1 would be 1 and N2 would be 2. Right? First excited state means N is equals to 2. Am I right? Is it clear to all of you? First excited state means N is equals to 2. Right? If N is equals to 2, so 2 is your even number. So, when N is basically 2, that is your even number. Fine? So, let's find out the length. Length is minus A to A. So this is your length. This is your origin, and po origin point. This is A and this is minus A. So total length is basically how much? 2A. A plus A. So total length is 2A. So whenever we have this system that is minus A to A, right? Or minus L to L. Then how we can solve this question? We have to find your excited state. Okay. If N excited state is your even, then the system would be sin, okay? The, the equation would be sin. And if N is equals to odd, the equation would be cos, okay? This is how we can solve it. Now, let's go to the question. So, this is minus A to A. And first excited state, that means N is equals to 2, which is an even number. So, the system would be in sine terms, okay? So, we can see this is sine cos cos sine okay so we can cancel out option a we can cancel out option c right because we know that now the system would be in sine okay so sine and sine so what is the value of your uh, right uh, basically hydrogen atom this is nothing but phi is 2 pi 2 by l sine n pi x by l this is your value now we are going to substitute l is equals to 2a so pi right 2 by 2a that would be 1 by a right n pi okay n pi x by l l is basically your 2a and n is basically 2 okay so 2 and 2 would be cancelled so final equation would be 1 by a sine pi x by a so this is going to be your final equation okay so 1 by a sine pi x by a so b answer is your correct answer right is it clear now let's go to next question Why cos in autumn? Basically, when n is equals to 1, okay, uh, this is your graph, okay, this is basically your graph. When n is equals to 2, this is your graph, okay, it depends on your nodes. When n is equals to 3, node would be 2, so 1, 2, and 3, okay. So, with this particular basis, we are getting different types of graph, sine and cos. How we got L is equals to 2A? See, minus A2 plus A is your length. Minus A2 plus A is your length, okay? Plus A means from origin, right? 
this is your a distance and from origin in opposite direction the distance is also a minus represents the direction is opposite okay so a distance from here and a distance from here so delta l or des delta l would be this is your final distance from 0 to a and this is also a distance okay so a plus a is equals to 2a Okay, so whenever your system is like minus L to L, okay, whenever your system is like minus L to L, then you have to find N value, okay, then you have to find N value. If N value is even, so the equation would be in sign terms, if N value is odd, okay, the equation would be in cos terms, okay. Now, in, in the previous question, basically the excited state is first, first excited state means N is equals to 2. If n is equal to 2, so you can see it's an even number. So with even number, basically we will have sine equation. Okay, sine equation. So if your n is equal to odd, let's suppose n would be 3. Okay, second excited state. So second excited state means n is equal to 3. So 3 is an odd number. Now in that particular case, the equation would be uh, right 1 by a cos pi x by a. Okay, this is how you can find out the equation. Okay, if n is equal to 3, so equation would be 1 by a cos 3 pi x by 2a. Is it clear, Akshita? Okay, so let's solve this question. Uh, it's, it's 18 enoline system. So 18 enoline means 4n plus 2 is equals to 18. 4n is equals to 16. n is equals to 4. So the system is aromatic. This enoline ring is basically aromatic okay now we know in aromatic enoline systems we got two different types of peak one is periphery protons and one are your inside protons okay so definitely we'll be getting two different types of peak okay so we can cancel out option a only one peak we can cancel out option b only one peak. okay so now we are left with option c and option d okay so 12 hydrogens now we know we have 18 enoline system okay there is no need to even draw the structure 18 enoline means nine carbons okay 18 enoline means 9 carbon. See, this is how we can draw it. Right? 18 enoline means your 9 carbon. Okay? So, definitely we will be having this type of structure. Right? We can draw this enoline structure. And we will say we will definitely have 9 different types or 12 different types of your protons okay we'll be getting 12 different types of protons at this high d shielded value and three and six different types of protons at low d shielded value okay so due to aromatic character inside protons would be d early shielded and outside protons would be your d shielded okay so this is basically your d shielded and this is basically your shielded protons right so this is how we can find this value and the correct answer would be option c Great, okay. Let's go to next question.
right okay so let's solve this question so we have to find out the value of this commutator right so let's find out this value so let's take a function fx okay let's take a function fx so we know uh, a commutator b is equals to a b minus b a so this is p k x right minus x p x fx so this is how we can find out this value so how we can open the structure this would be minus iota h cross del by del x into x okay so minus iota h cross is a constant value so we can take this outside so minus iota h cross del x by x okay so this is your value and this value would be 1 okay we know this value would be 1 so answer would be minus iota h cross okay so correct answer is option b minus iota h cross okay so let's see if uh, right we are getting more correct options zero definitely this is not the correct answer okay minus iota h cross now let's check option a okay so we are getting iota in denominator so what we need to do we need to multiply this by iota into iota okay multiply this by iota and divide this by iota okay this is how we can do this thing next is minus iota square h divided by iota okay we know that iota square is 1 okay it's minus 1 so minus 1 and minus 1 would be 1 so this would be h by iota okay this would be h by iota so definitely option a is also correct okay i by h is not possible let's see this thing also right this is a minus iota h into right let's do h by h okay let's do h cut by h cut multiply this by h cut and divide this by h cut okay so this would be minus iota h square by h cut so definitely this is not the correct answer okay so correct answer would be option number a and b okay correct answer would be option number a and b very good everyone let's take next question Okay, Adanu is going with B, Akshita B, Ankit D, Bharti D, Shekhar D, Lovely D, Moshmi D, right? Uh, Tripti D. Okay. All right. Fine. So let's solve this question. So the question is M gas to M positive gas plus electron is this value. So IE1 is basically this value. Okay, this is your second equation given now we have to find incorrect statements among the following okay let's go with first statement and verify let's verify the statement okay first statement says ionization energy one of m gas is 100 electron volts so this is m gas this is first electron all uh, right ejection definitely one electron delta h is 100 electron volts so this is your correct answer okay this is your correct answer ionization energy one is definitely 100 electron volts let's go to option b 
ionization energy one of m positive is 200 electron volts okay so basically if i take one electron the an amount of energy is 100 if i take two electrons we need to give 300 amount of energy right basically 300 electron volts okay so what we need we need ionization energy one of m positive so what is your ionization energy of m positive that means m2 positive plus electron okay ionization energy of m2 positive plus electron okay so if i'm taking two electrons so that is 300 from metal gas if i'm taking one electron that is 100 okay so definitely from m positive to m2 positive that would be 300 minus 100 is equals to 200 electron volts so correct this is also your correct uh, right uh, basically equation this is also your correct equation let's go to option c okay ionization energy 2 of metal gas is 200 ionization energy 2 of metal gas is 200 definitely that is also correct ionization energy 2 of metal gas is your 200 okay because basically uh, if if i am taking metal gas then we are doing ionization energy 1 so m positive that is 100 okay this this value is basically 100 then from sec this one we are taking one more electron so that is 300 so basically from m plus to m positive it's your uh, 200 okay ionization energy 2 of metal gas is 300 electron volts this is your third st uh, fourth statement ionization energy 2 of metal gas is 300 electron volts okay so which is basically uh, correct okay Op this is correct option b is correct so definitely this is going to be your incorrect answer is it clear to all of you any doubts so option d is your correct answer for this question okay ionization energy 2 of metal gas is 300 electron volts so that is absolutely uh, incorrect okay so this is your correct answer that is option number d now let's go to next question
Okay, so what answer you're getting for this question? Uh, B is also correct. Okay, C. Uh, the D statement is ionization energy 2 of manganese. This, mag this particular metal gas, right, is 300 electron volts. Okay, so option D is your incorrect. Option B is definitely correct. Okay, IE2 of your metal gas is 200 electron volts. Okay, IE2 of metal gas is 200 electron volts because if I'm taking one electron from metal gas, that would be Mi, uh, this metal positive. Okay, so this value is 100. From metal positive to M2 positive, this value is 200. Okay, this value is 200. So the correct answer would be, uh, right, this is going to be a correct statement, 200 electron volts. Okay, IE2 of metal gas is 200 electron volts, not 300 electron volts. Is it clear? Alright, just a second guys, okay, just a second. So, I think uh, we are doing some mistake in this question, okay. Just a second. So, let's do this question again. Yes, definitely, Akshita, uh, I think you, you are correct, okay. You are definitely correct. See, if this is uh, our equation, okay. So, this is metal gas and basically it's giving first electron, okay. So first uh, statement is IE1 of metal gas is 100. This is definitely correct. Okay. IE of M gas is 100 electron volts. This is definitely correct statement for sure. Okay. Let's go with option B. IE1 of M gas is 200. So we can take this difference. So this is also correct. Okay. Next is IE2 of M gas is 300. IE2 of M gas. Right. This is basically M gas to M2 positive 2 electrons. This is correct statement. Okay. B is correct statement, not incorrect statement. Okay. Uh, definitely you are correct. Then IE2 of M gas is 200. IE2 of M gas is 300, right? IE2 of M gas because we are taking two electrons and energy required is 300 electron volts. Okay. So IE2 basically 200 value is for IE1 of your M gas, M positive. Okay. For this thing, the value is 200. But IE2 of M gas is 300 electron volts. Okay. Yes, definitely uh, you are correct. So, correct answer is not a D. Correct answer is option C. Correct answer is option uh, C. Not, not D. Okay. Option C is basically your incorrect statement. Okay, IE2 of M, M gas, okay, IE2 of M gas is 200 electron volts, okay. I think correct answer is option C, okay. So, I'll again recheck this question and we'll let you know the correct answer, okay. So, let's go to next question.
right okay so what answer you're getting for this question uh, let's solve this question so the question is basically a molar conductivity is of an electrolyte are 150 okay molar conductivities of electrolyte are 150 okay when concentration are 4 and 9 so how we can solve this question what is the uh, value of limiting law so basically value is equals to lambda is equals to lambda naught minus b root c okay lambda is equals to lambda naught minus b root c this is your value okay this is basically your equation okay uh, yes ankit okay we we have some doubts in option uh, basically previous question first let's solve this question then again we'll be solving that question okay i will again come to that question so lambda means lambda naught minus b root c so how we can solve this question we have two concentrations and we have two values okay so this is basically lambda uh, naught is equals to minus b right so lambda one is lambda naught minus b root c and for first equation we can write 4 over here okay so this this value is 100 okay when concentration is 4 this value is 100 okay next is when concentrate when this value is 50 concentration is basically okay it's root 9 all right so we got two values now so what we can write 100 is equals to 2b okay and 50 is equals to lambda naught minus 3b so now we got two equations one and two what we need we need limited molar conductivity value okay now we can solve this equation and we can find out uh, this particular value okay we can definitely solve this equation and we can find out this value okay so we need this value so we can we, we have to either cancel out this part or this part okay so let's let's cancel out this part so this is basically minus so we're going to multiply this by 3 and this by 2 okay so this equation would be now 300 is equals to 3 lambda naught minus 6b and this would be uh, basically we are we are multiplying by 2 so 100 is equals to 2 lambda naught minus 6b okay so i'm changing the sign of this particular equation this is this is negative and this is negative so this and this will be cancelled out and now 200 200 value is basically equals to lambda naught m so correct answer over here is 200 simon centimeter square mole inverse so is it clear to all of you the correct value is 200 simon centimeter square mole inverse any doubts in this question clear everyone okay so uh, now let's again come to that question and uh, solve it over here okay so let's discuss what would be the correct statement so option a is definitely the correct statement okay and option b is definitely the correct statement ie1 is correct and ie2 of m positive is also correct okay ie1 is also correct next is ie2 of m gas is 200 and ie2 of m gas is 300 okay so what we have to find out we have to find out the correct uh, answer okay so basically ie2 of m gas is 300 electron volts so now if i write m gas it, it will give you m positive plus electron okay then again this would be your ie1 and this would be your ie2 so this will give you m2 positive plus a uh, one electron okay so this value is 100 and this value is 200 okay and the total value is basically 300 okay this value is 100 this value is 200 so it's written ie2 of your m gas is 300 electron volts and according to this equation ie2 of m gas is base basically all right this 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 value is basically 200 electron volts not 300 electron volts okay so yes okay there is no need of any confusion uh, the correct answer for this question would be uh, definitely option uh, d okay that means option d is your incorrect state now it's now it's uh, clear for sure okay option d is your uh, incorrect statement okay so anyhow there is no need to just co get confused in this question okay so yeah it's a quite confusing question with the statements but option d is going to be your correct answer okay so uh, is it clear now akshita is this statement clear okay right 
right i hope the question is clear so we have discussed uh, right this 12 questions in today's class tomorrow also we have one uh, right class we have a uh, part 4 of this class on youtube only at basically 10 uh, am okay so we have class at 10 am okay tomorrow at the same timing we'll going to do practice more questions and tomorrow i'll be bringing some difficult questions okay today we have some easy questions and tomorrow in, in, in the class we'll be taking some advanced problems okay so i hope you found this session useful if you did you can just uh, if you have any feedbacks to give you can write in the comment section okay i'll see you in the next class take care everyone bye bye, bye. yes definitely i'll i'll provide the pdf okay i'll send the pdf for sure after this session only i'll send the pdf okay take care everyone bye bye